Hello and welcome to another Treasure Seekers Online. My name is Sue and I'm Jane and today we're going to be thinking about celebrating Easter Day. So let's start as we always do with our Hello Song. Get the cheeses ready. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, we're glad you're here today. Hello Jesus, hello Jesus, hello Jesus, we're glad you're here with us. Here's our other Jesus with his arms out wide for our prayer. As high, high as, as the, the sky, sky, as deep as the sea, as wide as the world is God's love for me. Now you need your instruments. We are treasure seekers, we are treasure seekers, we have fun, we have fun. Won't you come and join us, won't you come and join us, one by one, one by one. Now it's Easter, now it's Easter, we'll have fun, we'll have fun. Won't you come and join us? Won't you come and join us? One by one, one by one. Well done. Lovely. Ah, Easter is a fun time, isn't it? And this morning I've been quite busy because I've been getting ready my Easter tree. And I'm just finishing off putting the very last few eggs on my tree and deciding which branches I'm going to put them on. I think I might hang that little egg up on a, a high branch there and ooh, I've got a really sparkly blue one here. I might put that on a little branch there next to that little hen. So I've got lots of lovely things on our Easter tree because at Easter time we're thinking about things that bring new life, aren't we? New life at Easter. So we've got some little chicks and some hens on that on there. And I've got a little basket of eggs that I'm going to put out as a decoration to. That on there. And I might have some pretty flowers at the base of my tree. There's like that. And then this one's got a flower and some eggs on it. Put that there. And I've got a, a little Easter nest, a little speckled egg, which reminds me a little bit of a kind of egg that a hen might lay. So we'll have mother hen there, and then some eggs are good to eat, aren't they? So we might have our little hen Easter egg there, with a pretend egg inside it. Looks like a dippy egg, doesn't it? We might put our toast soldiers in. So, we're all ready for Easter. But are we? What do you think, Jane? Well, we've got an Easter time song, but the song tells us that it's not just a time for bunnies and a time for eggs. It's all about Jesus too. So we'll put Jesus right at the front. You might know the tune to this song. Right. Easter time, Easter time, we, we have, have so much to do. Time for bunnies, time for eggs, but time for Jesus too. Easter time, Easter time, Jesus showed his love. He died for us and rose again. He's with the Lord above. Well done. Now I wonder if any of you had some of these. 
on Friday. Hot cross buns. You can see the cross. We've got a song to sing about that. It goes like this. Sing a song of Easter when we eat hot cross buns. The cross there to remind us what happened to God's Son. But now the tomb is empty, the stone is rolled away. Come join our celebration, Jesus rose on Easter Day. And that's what we're going to hear about today. Last time in our story, we finished at a really sad point. Jesus had died on the cross. And the friends were sad and had run away to hide because they were afraid. But two other friends called Joseph and Nicodemus decided that they would go and see the Romans to ask for Jesus' body so that they could put it carefully in a tomb which was like a cave carved into the rock. Joseph had had his own tomb made quite near where Jesus was. It was in a garden. So Joseph and Nicodemus went to the Romans in charge and asked for the body. They said yes, the men could have Jesus' body. So very carefully they took the body down from the cross and laid it on clean fresh linen. Then They carefully carried the body down into the garden nearby, following down the paths. And when they got there, they very gently laid Jesus' body on a stone table, like a bed inside the tomb. placed the grave clothes around his body and then another cloth over Jesus' head and then rolled the heavy stone across the entrance like a door. And they had done all that they could do And the Romans watched to see where the friends had placed the body. And their leaders said, put guards on duty at the stone that covers the entrance, just in case the friends come in the night and steal the body and pretend that Jesus has escaped. So Roman guards stood outside the tomb. Joseph and Nicodemus went off into the night because it was now evening time. That was Friday evening. Saturday was a really sad day. Everything was still. Everything was quiet. The friends were so sad and frightened. Was this the end? Was Jesus the rescuer gone? How could God have allowed him to die and go into a stone-cold tomb? It seemed impossible. That day seemed to last forever. The friends couldn't sleep. 
they just worried and wept. But then, very early on Sunday morning, Mary, one of Jesus' special friends, and some other ladies who were friends of Jesus, decided that they needed to do something. They knew that Joseph and Nicodemus had had to place Jesus' body in the tomb very quickly on Friday evening. So it hadn't been washed and it hadn't been prepared with spices and oils. So they wanted to do one last thing for their friend Jesus. So they went down into the garden through the gloom. The sun had not yet come up. It was dark. And as they walked, they said to one another, how will we move that heavy stone from the entrance? But then an incredible thing happened. The earth started to quake and shake and an angel of the Lord appeared and rolled back the stone from the entrance of the tomb. The Roman soldiers were so frightened that they froze like dead men. And then another angel appeared. Two angels, one where Jesus' head had been and one where Jesus' feet had been. The women looked terrified. So the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. Why have you come to a place for dead people to look for someone who is alive? 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 They had seen that Jesus was dead. What was the angel telling them? Go, said the angel, go back to the other friends and tell them what you have seen, that Jesus of Nazareth is alive. The women were astonished. They didn't know what to think, but they knew they had to tell this friend, the friends this news. So they rushed back along the path, back to the house where all Jesus' friends were hiding. And when they got there, they explained the news, how the stone had been rolled aside and how angels had appeared and told them that Jesus was alive. The friends could not believe what the women were saying. And Peter and John said, how is this true? They felt they had to see for themselves. So Peter and John ran along the same path towards the tomb. John ran faster and he got to the tomb first. He saw what the women had told them, that the stone was rolled away. He looked in and he could see the grave clothes where Jesus' body had been laid, but he could not see Jesus. Peter arrived next. He saw again that he could get into the entrance of the tomb. So Peter, wanting to find out, was this real, took himself right into the tomb so he could look all around to see if the body was hidden anywhere. But it wasn't. All he could see was the white linen, the piece that had been round Jesus' body and the separate piece that had been around Jesus' head. Jesus really was gone. Was this true? Was the angel's message really true? Had 
something happen to make Jesus alive again? Peter and John returned back to tell the other friends what they had seen. But Mary, confused and still sad, waited in the garden, looking at the two. Then, suddenly, as she stood there weeping, she noticed that there was somebody else in the garden too. Thinking this must be a gardener, she called out, Gardener, if you have taken Jesus' body, please show me where you have put it so I can go and see it. But then she heard her name. Mary, only one person said her name like that. She knew that voice. She looked. Yes, it was Jesus. Jesus, teacher, she said, you're alive. And she wanted to hug him. But Jesus said, don't hug me now, Mary because I haven't gone back to my father yet. But go to my friends and tell them that I am alive and that I will see them very soon. Mary ran faster than she had ever run before. What news she had to tell them? She had seen the Lord. Jesus really was alive. This was the most marvellous news. Jesus, who they thought was dead, had come back to life. Jesus had turned everything sad into happiness. Jesus had even crushed death. Even the tomb could not hold him. He was alive and Mary wanted to tell everyone the news. Jesus is alive. And she told the friends. They were amazed. We can sing about how Mary wanted to share the news of that very first Easter. Sing a song of Easter, there's lots for us to share. The Easter story tells us how great our Father's care. Let's share the news like Mary, so join us as we sing. Jesus Christ is risen, he's Lord of everything. There are lots of different ways that the story of Easter can be shared. Someone has written a special Easter poem and we can share that now. All in an Easter garden, before the break of day, an angel came from heaven and rolled the stone away. When Jesus' friends came seeking, with myrrh and spices rare, they found the angels at the door, but Jesus was not there. All in an Easter garden, where trees and flowers bloom, the angels gave their message beside an empty tomb. The Lord is here no longer. Come, see where once he lay. The Lord of life is risen indeed, for this is Easter day.
Do you remember how poor Mary was very sad when she wasn't sure what had happened to Jesus? There's a little song that we can sing together. It goes like this. Poor Mary is a weeping, a weeping, a weeping. Poor Mary is a weeping, for she misses her friend. But Jesus, he is living, is living, is living. But Jesus, he is living on the first Easter day. So Mary, she is happy now, is happy now, is happy now. So Mary, she is happy now, and we all are today. Thank you if you joined in with us. There's something else that you can join in with now. We're going to do a little action rhyme so you'll need your hands ready. So the first thing we're going to do is to make some trees in a garden. If you remember Jesus prayed in a garden. For the next action we're going to take our fingers and we're going to make them into a cross shape. That's right. For the next one, we're going to use our hands to make a tomb. So make a fist. There's our tomb on the ground. And then we need to open up our fingers, a bit like the sun shining first thing in the morning. The rhyme goes like this. Here is the garden where Jesus prayed. Here is the cross where we were saved. Here is the tomb where Jesus was laid. And after three days, Jesus was raised. Excellent. Well done. And to finish this session of Treasure Seekers, we'll say a prayer, thanking God for everything that we've learned about Easter. Dear Father God, Thank you for the Easter story. Thank you that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Thank you for the sad part of the story where Jesus died on a cross for each one of us. But thank you most of all for the good news of Easter Day and the empty tomb. And we know that Jesus is alive. So, when you tuck into your Easter eggs a bit later on today, oh, when we open them, they're empty because the tomb was empty, because Jesus wasn't dead, Jesus was alive and he's alive today. So, happy Easter everyone. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah! See you next time. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.